Do you want to learn how you can reduce the amount of code inside your lambdas? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to teach you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. In this video, we'll be looking at an NPM package called Lambda Hooks. This library is designed to minimize the amount of code you have inside your lambdas by removing repetitive tasks such as logging out the event or passing the body. This is really good as it means that you're reducing the amount of code you're writing you're also reducing the amount of time that you're copying the same code into multiple lambdas, which reduces the chance of error. And if you are testing, reduces the amount of code you need to test. This package was set up by one of my colleagues and I've been using it for a little while and I absolutely love it. So we're gonna jump into the code now and learn how we can set up the basis of this Lambda Hooks package. Now that we're in the code, we can have a go at implementing these Lambda Hooks. We're going to do it to start with in the create player score.js file. The first thing we need to do is go into our terminal and run npm install dash dash save and we're installing Lambda dash hooks. Whilst that's installing, we can get into our code. At the top of our code, we need to import the lambda hooks. So the way that we do that is we say const, and then we're destructuring use hooks off the lambda hooks npm package. So we do that by requiring in the lambda hooks and saving that. And it is use hooks, not user hooks. So now we have this use hooks method. What we need to do is we need to create a with hooks method as well. So the way this works is we pass in a configuration object to this use hooks hooks method to describe the hooks that we want to use. So const with hooks equals use hooks. And in here we need to define the before, which is an array. We need to define after, which is also an array. And finally, on error, which is also an array. So in this configuration, we're saying that before we run our handler, we want to run some hooks. We also have the option to set them after. And finally, if there's an error that isn't handled in here, we can have this on error run to catch that error and do some processing. By default, Lambda Hooks has a couple of hooks pre-built for us. One of those hooks is called log event. And if we go into before, we can add the log event hook. This means that anytime we use these hooks, it's going to run this log event and that just console logs out the event at the start. To actually use these hooks, we need to copy this with hooks and make a bit of a change to our handler. Instead of exporting our normal handler, we need to define it as a function. And at the bottom of our file, we need to exports.handler and instead of it equaling the handler up here, we have to call with hooks and pass in our handler. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to wrap that handler with our hooks. So before, after or on error is always going to be handled inside these hooks. We can now scroll back up to our hooks. And because we've added this log event, we can actually delete this first line of our code. As well as that, we can do other things. And one of the other hooks that comes with Lambda hooks is the parse event. So we can now copy that and add this to our array. Passing an event is a hook that goes through the event that comes in, passes any JSON in the body, as well as setting the path parameters to be objects. So because of this, we can do one thing. We know that the path parameters is always going to be an object. So we can get rid of this first part of the test because we know that event.path parameters is always going to be true. Down here, we can also say that the user isn't at JSON passing the event body because the event body has been passed already by the Lambda hooks. So it just equals event.body. That is all that we need to do before. But we also want to be able to handle if there has been an uncaught error in our code. To do that, we get one last thing from the Lambda hooks, and that is handle unexpected error. And if we copy this and put it into our on error, what this will do is it catches anything that errors and isn't handled within our handler. And if there is an error, it will send a response of error message back to the customer with a 400 response. So where we can use that is here, we have caught the error and we're returning null. Returning null at the moment so that new user gets this. But what we can actually do is we can get rid of this catch altogether. And when, if a customer uses an incorrect table name or the, fail, the Dynamo write fails for whatever reason, this will fail our lamp, this handler, but that will get caught by this exception error and it will be handed back in a respectable manner with a 400 response and an error message. So that is all of the code that we need and we could deploy this right now. But as you can see, we've actually added about as many lines as we've removed, which doesn't seem to make much sense. The way this makes loads of sense is if you configure this so that this is usable across multiple lambdas. The way that we do that is we go into common and create a new file called hooks.js and now in this file what we do is we take the importing of the lambda hooks and with hooks and we cut them out of this file and paste them in here we can now exports dot uh, sorry module dot exports equals an object and we can export with hooks. What this means is we can now go back into our create player score and at the bottom with hooks is not defined but we can say that const with hooks equals require dot dot slash common slash hooks. Now we have it so that this is working in exactly the same way where it will be console logged out. It will then be passed so that event body is going to be valid. And if there's an error, it's going to be handled. 
This is good, but now I'll show you how we can change another file. So if we copy this import and go into the get player score code, we can paste that in, change it from exports.handler to const handler, go down to the bottom of your file and say exports dot handler equals with hooks passing in your handler and that is all you'd actually need to do to get your hooks running what we can do as well as that is we can minify this code to remove redundant code that is now covered by those hooks so we can remove this catch and we can remove this console log as well as the path parameters check at the start here. Now you can see the power of using these hooks. We've managed to reduce the code by about seven or eight lines, all with requiring in one hook. In this video, we have managed to use the Lambda hooks NPM package to do a couple of things in our code. We have reduced the amount of repetitive code, as well as increasing the security by handling all unhandled promise rejections, which means that our Lambda is much less likely to fall over. With both of these, these were all done with the inbuilt hooks that comes with the Lambda hooks repo. But in the next video, I'm gonna teach you something that's much more powerful. I'm gonna teach you how you can write your own hooks so that you can have custom logic extracted into those hooks, which allows you to reduce your code even further and make much better use of this NPM package. I look forward to teaching you that then. So if you've learned something new, make sure to give it a like and I'll see you again in the next video.